Good morning, and welcome to the virtual worship service of the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown. My name is Reverend Kate Wilkinson, and I am so glad that you have chosen to be in community with us this morning. Today's service is called Two Pockets, and we'll be talking about paradox. A paradox means that two things that are seemingly contradictory or opposite can both be true at the same time. For example, last week we explored how this time of the pandemic can be both sad and hopeful. This week we'll explore how our spiritual journey leads us to feel both big and small, how it's important that we see ourselves as individuals as well as part of a community, and how we might know that something is the right next step if it feels both scary and exciting. So join us this morning as we embrace the paradox of living. But first, we light our chalice as a symbol of our faith. And as I light my chalice here at the meeting house, I invite you to light a candle wherever you are. This is Eric, lighting a candle in Truro. Hi, this is Kurt and Michael, and we're lighting a candle, candle in, Boston. in Boston. This is, this is Mary, lighting a candle in Provincetown. This is John and James, lighting a candle in Pisca Forest, North Carolina. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Spirit of life, our hearts are breaking we pray for an end to hatred and racism. We pray for an end of fear and seeing each other as other, as stranger, as threat. We pray that a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a sense of us all being siblings finally descends on us so that we stop killing each other. We pray that those of us who are white will wake up and be enraged and sad and devastated along with our siblings of color who are being killed. We light candles today for George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, for Christian Cooper, we light a candle for all of those who don't feel safe going out for a run, calling the police, or in their own homes. We pray for a world that is safe for everyone, where we mourn equally everyone, where there is justice for each life that is taken. Right now, we just recognize that hearts are broken People are angry, looking for a way to vent a rage so that others will feel it too. We're not trying to stop the tears or the anger 
or the expressions of that deep grief and sadness. We're just witnessing, holding, mourning. Spirit of life, make room for all of those emotions in our broken, open hearts. May there be space for that which we are feeling and the feelings of others. May we continue to do the work of justice. Amen. Spirit of life, come to me, sing in my heart, all stirrings of passion, all in the winds, Our reading this morning is entitled Paradox by Sarah York. We named the kitten Puppy Cat, which fits her contradictory nature. She follows us around like a puppy. With no apparent physical needs, she cries for attention. She just wants to chat and demands some sign that we are listening. If we try to pick her up, however, she protests. Keep me close and pet me, she says, but don't hold me. I want to be free. The needs for love and freedom create ambivalence in most of us. Like puppy cat, we send out double messages. Love me, but do not intrude upon my space. I want to be close but I am afraid of being hurt. I need you, but I want to be independent. I need to be needed, but I don't want to be used, and so on. We live on the boundary of so many inner contradictions. We love the peacefulness of the country and the excitement of the city. We love the freshness of a summer breeze and the beauty of a winter storm. You can create your own list. We are full of opposing feelings and ideas. The trick is to be able to accept our contradictions and keep them in balance moving back and forth between them, rather than allowing them to lock us in the uncertainty of ambivalence. There's a difference between ambivalence and paradox. In ambivalence, we are torn. Our feelings conflict. In paradox, we accept and admit our own tensions. Our feelings generate creative energy from the dynamic of opposites. In ambivalence, we have difficulty making commitments and decisions. We convey double messages to others. In paradox, we admit our uncertainties and reservations, and we act wholeheartedly committing ourselves to our experiences. Maybe the main difference is that in paradox, we are willing to make commitments when all we can ever hope for is partial knowledge and uncertain outcome.
Before I entered the ministry, I met for a year with a life coach who was a UU minister. The sessions were a gift from my sister, and it was one of the best gifts I have ever received. My life coach listened to my thoughts and feelings and dreams, and also gave me tools to take control of my own life and to make choices that would allow me to be my full self in the world. There was lots of homework. She taught me the warrior yoga pose to work on strength, confidence, and courage. We went hiking together at the Blue Hills, and when we got to the trail, she handed me the map and said, you choose the path. When it became clear that I was not a risk taker, she signed me up for a belly dancing class. One piece of advice that I clearly remember her giving me, and which has guided me ever since, was when you are both scared and excited about something, that is a sign that you should move forward with that challenge. How can something be both scary and exciting? Well, it happens all the time. Asking somebody out on a date is scary and exciting. Applying for a new job is scary and exciting. Speaking in public is scary and exciting. Going off to college is scary and exciting. And let me tell you, going to a belly dancing class is scary and exciting. The scary part signals to us that the thing before us is big and might be hard, might take us out of our comfort zones. The exciting part signals to us that there is passion and interest there, that this is something that might bring us alive in a new way. The song our choir sang this morning, The Fire of Commitment, speaks of this. It says, when our hunger and our passion meet to guide us on our way, then our promise finds fulfillment and our future can begin. Learning to identify when we are feeling multiple ways about something is an important part of discernment, that kind of decision-making that is rooted deep within ourselves and our core values. 
We are constantly navigating through conflicting and contradictory feelings and emotions and values in our life. Sometimes the wisdom lies not in resolving that conflict, but in seeking out the balance between the two things. Different parts of ourselves meet to guide us on our way. Rabbi Simcha Bunim was a Polish Hasidic rabbi in the late 18th century. He did not write down his teachings, but they were passed down orally by generations of Hasidic teachers. One of his teachings was this. Our master taught every person should have two pockets. In one pocket should be a piece of paper saying, I am but dust and ashes from the book of Genesis. In the other pocket should be a piece of paper saying, for my sake, the world was made from the Mishnah Sanhedrin. Two pockets, one full of humility and one full of pride. When we are feeling proud, he said, we should take the slip of paper from our pocket that reads, I am but dust and ashes, reminding us of our humble origins. But when we are feeling disheartened and small, we should take the slip of paper from the other pocket that reads, for my sake, the world was made. One of our biggest spiritual challenges, the journey of a lifetime, is to recognize and remember these two paradoxical truths. Remembering the world was created for our sake, while at the same time recognizing that we are only dust and ashes. I know for me, when I am tipped too much in the direction of pride or humility, it helps to go and stand beside the ocean. There I feel both big and small, and things are pulled back into perspective, perhaps by the tides. I am fed by the beauty and the wildness of the world before me, filled with gratitude, and also reminded that the world does not begin and end with me. I am but a small part of it. And therefore, my problems or struggles cannot be insurmountable. They are not that big and never were. They had just grown so in my own mind. Those two truths and the soothing lapping of the waves always make me feel better. We are constantly balancing the paradoxes of living. It's an integral part of our spiritual journey. My colleague, Reverend Victoria Safford writes, it seems to me we speak all the time and all at once of two kinds of spiritual integrity, two ways of being deeply liberally religious, one looking inward and one looking outward. And that presents a kind of paradox, she says. Our work as 21st century Unitarian Universalists is to attend to both at once, never one without the other because in fact they are not as separate as they seem. They're entirely intertwined. And whenever we forget this, things start quickly to unravel. In his book, Toward a Humanist Vocabulary of Reverence, David Bumbaugh writes, we are driven to recognize the paradox that our individual well-being is rooted in the understanding that at heart, we are at one with all things. 
And our sense of separateness is ultimately an illusion. While at the same time, affirming that our individual separateness is a consequence of the drive of the universe for differentiation and complexity. We are driven by our story, he says, to seek an ethic that respects the individual and the ground out of which the individual emerges. This implies a deep concern for justice that reaches across class, racial, ethnic, even species distinctions and embraces a vision that responds to the largest sense of self we are capable of entertaining. Now, as we continue to stay at home as much as we can, as we worship virtually for another season, our sense of self as separate might be growing. But we remember the reason that we are doing so, which is to protect and keep safe our families, both the ones we know dearly and the strangers. We are part of a web of creation, a single garment of destiny. And so our individual choices are made not for ourselves, but for others, or at least somewhere in the balance between the two. And though we do not control everything, we are in control of some things. And so, guided by our hunger and our passion, we hold both. We look inward and outward. We are both excited and scared, both big and small, humble and proud, alone and together. And somewhere deep inside of us, we know that all of these paradoxes are true. And we find a place of balance, a peace that is also a restlessness. We deepen into a place where our promise finds fulfillment and our future can begin. Amen and blessed be.